Okay, well, welcome to Lament of Hope podcast. I'm here today talking with Bonnie Bartlett Daniels. Bonnie published a book this year um, called Middle of the Rainbow. It's her memoir on her life um, and her acting career as well. And it's such a gift to speak with her. She's been married for over 70 years. And I'm very excited to hear about her life and what she's up to now. Bonnie, thanks for joining the podcast. I'm happy to be here, really. So Bonnie, can you tell me for people who haven't read your memoir yet, what was your childhood like? How would you describe it? Uh, complex. Uh, it, much of it was wonderful. Much of it was wonderful. Um, I loved, uh, it, it was a little town in Illinois called Moline, Moline, Illinois. It's the home of John Deere Plows. And uh, a lot of, it, when I was there a long time ago, very Swedish populated because uh, John Deere brought over a lot of Swedish labor. And they would come in and they would only be able to say, Yanni Deer, Yanni Deer. But that because of that, there's a lot of Swansons and Nelsons and Olsons and all kinds of, of Swedish names. Uh, so we, we weren't that, but but it was uh, a lot, a lot of it in that town. And uh, but it was a good town. It's a good little town. And I enjoyed much of it. I mean, it was backward in the sense of being um, typically. Um, what can I say? Typically insulated, not a world town. Do you know people, my friends wanted to be born there, grow up there, work there, die there. Okay. Most of my friends, you know, it was that kind of thing, which isn't good. And now it's not good because we have to be part of the world. Hmm. We have to, we have to, we can't just be Moliners. We have to be part of the whole world. And that's important. But anyway, so that part was very good. And I loved the people. I had wonderful friends. I had lo lovely people, friends, church. I had wonderful teachers in church and in school, some terrible teachers and some marvelous teachers. It's a combination, you know. It's not a, a, like a big town, but there are gems everywhere. There are gems of people. And uh, and I, I had a lot of those. Uh, I had a father who was very interesting. My parents were, um, my dad had been an actor. Hmm. And so he, uh, he and he quoted a lot. He, he would talk to you in poetry or Shakespeare or stuff like that. But he also had a dark side and he was, uh, abusive toward me and I guess he didn't realize it. I guess he didn't know. And when I objected to certain things, my mother would say, oh, you're just being, he just trying to be affectionate, things like that. But he did, he overstepped the line very much so. So that, that part was tough. You know, that part was tough. Did that last a long time or? Well, I think what happened was I was a tough little girl. I was a very uh, wild little, good, very smart and, you know, quick and all that. What happened is that when I objected to some of the things that he did, hmm. I was told by my mother and everybody, oh, he just told me. And when I got no relief, I didn't know what to do. Nobody that I spoke to, and I didn't speak to many people, but nobody seemed to think there was anything wrong with it. And hmm. so I think I got very depressed. I went through a period of being very depressed around 10, 9, 10, 11, you know, until I got uh, into junior high school and discovered that I could act and, you know, got very, very involved in school, my friends and all that. And I kind of just pushed him aside. I didn't want to be with him and I was such a good student. And I, I was straight A student. Hmm. 
doing lots of activities, the heads of this and the heads of that and everything. So I just kind of tried to ignore him, you know? Uh, I wasn't with him that much. I, I stayed away. I stayed away from them, both of them. I, I kind of stayed away. And that, that saved me. And then all of being an actress was wonderful because it made me be other people. And so I wasn't that happy with myself because when those things happen, you don't know what's the matter. You know there's something wrong. You don't know if it's you. You don't know what's going on. This is a long time ago. It's not true today. But it's a long time ago. Now people bring these things up. I think most, a lot more, a lot more. But that that was the only tough part of it. He 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 was a difficult difficult man. So difficult. when your dad passed away, did you not feel very? I know for a lot of people, especially with difficult relationships with their parents when they pass away, there's not really a grief over their death as it is grieving over who that you wish they were. Did you experience that or how did you cope with losing? Uh, yes, I did not feel grief when either of my parents died. I did not feel grief. I was always uh, loyal, if you will say. I was always, I never denied them. I never... Uh, all my life, I I would visit them or, you know, things like that. I didn't throw them away, but I kept far apart. Yes, dear? No, it's all oh, I was just checking. And that. so, uh, but that was, uh, it was a very, uh, okay. Yeah, just click that. Huh? See if you can click this blue button. Oh, you want me to put that? Yeah, I want you to click that. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 use your mouse. Sorry oh. to interrupt. Oh, you're oh, okay. Now, there you go. Now click that. There you go. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> Thank now you. you can see. Um, so where were we? Uh, uh, you know, I, I think I'm a very strong person. I think it was, I know I, I was always very strong. I was born that way. And so I am intelligent. So I was able to handle it pretty well. I think a more introverted, uh, shy, insecure girl has a much harder time, or boy, much harder time with it. If you're kind of strong and think you're okay, and you know you you kind of manage to get through it. But I did go through a period of depression and not liking myself. Hmm. That's what happens. You you turn on yourself a little bit. So I did go through that period. Yes, I did. Was there something your mom or dad or both of them said to you that you remember and it, it kind of impressed itself upon your memory? That they said to me? Yeah, it could be something they said or did that maybe for you kind of defined who they were for your lifetime. That's interesting. That's interesting because... Uh, well, my mother, for instance, would say things like, I don't know if my mother was jealous of me or what, but my mother was very social, you know, very, she loved clothes and things like that. She didn't have really money, but she loved clothes. And she, when she bought something, it was beautiful. And she tried, and I rejected all that. I would wear the same clothes every day for a week. You know, and my friends would say, what are you doing? They'd wear these sweaters and things, different things. And I, I just paid, I denied all of that. I denied making myself pretty or attractive or anything like that. I denied all of that. And so my mother gave up on me, although she always admired the fact that I was a good student and a very good actress. She liked, she knew that more than dead. And, uh, I just remember that her saying, well, but at one time, yes, she did say, you're very homely. She said, you're homely. And I always remember that. Oh, I'm homely. So I thought I was homely. Uh, she never said that, oh, you're pretty or anything like that. She always said, you're smart and you're good actress, but physically, 
I didn't have a lot of help. <laughs> I had to work through that myself. It took me a long time to think that I looked okay, that I looked okay, that I was okay as a girl. Do you think there's something that you've grown in as an adult that your parents did wrong, that you see yourself doing right now as an adult, that you're proud of seeing a growth? Because a lot of I think I, I, I think I've been a, be a hell of a lot better mother. In what way? Well, every person is different. Every child is different. And you have to recognize that. You cannot make a child something that they're not. Do you know what I mean? They, they are going to, they should develop differently as in their own way, develop. And uh, I was very good at that. Uh, both of my boys are adopted because we lost a baby. But um, so I was curious as to how they would turn out. You know, I was, I, I knew it was, it, we weren't, it wasn't going to be us. It was going to be different different things, different things. And then they, of course, would be influenced by us. But one of my sons was very, very difficult. He had a hard time adjusting to the world. Hmm. And uh, I just decided, okay, this is my job. And I was just with him. I gave up acting. I gave up everything. I, I just was with him all the time, all through kindergarten first grade until we got to California. He did better here, but uh, I was with him every minute of the day. I went to school and I found jobs around the school to do so that I could be there so he could see that I was there because mm -hmm. he needed me to be there. And I think that that support helped him get started, you know, and he's done remarkably well. He's a great guy. He's got a lovely family. He's got, he's a great guy. And but he's done it all himself. It's just that I was there to let him do it because my friends and people in school, the teachers thought, oh, he's autistic or something. I said, no, he's not. I mean, my friends say, how could how can you stand this kid? I said, I love him and he's wonderful. And when he and I were together alone, we had a wonderful time. He just had a hard time adjusting to the world, to the, you know. What to being alive and not and what am I what am I gonna do? Extraordinarily talented, brilliant and talented. Why did you call your memoir Middle of the Rainbow? It's interesting because I I think it was there first of all, there's a, a little poem there somebody found for me. It's sort of like because what I mean is that the, the you know the thing about there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? I always felt, no, you don't get the pot of gold, but you're on the way. You're on the way. You're in the middle. You know, I have, I am so fortunate and so lucky about so many things. I've been so fortunate. If you look at the world around you, you know, how can you not feel grateful for having a good life, always being able to work, always being able to support yourself, always being able to take care of your family, being able to make enough money so that we can get our kids through school, that we can help our kids get their kids through school. That's really important to me, hmm. really important to me. And I always wanted to be able to do that for them, but then whatever they want to do is fine. I never, I never press as to what that you should do. I had no idea one son would be a singer that he would follow. And, you know, and, and Bobby, the boy that was difficult, was always an artist. Yes, from the time he was little. But he couldn't sell. His paintings sell now. And he's almost 60. Nothing. What? Nothing. Okay. I'm just checking. Thank you. And, and he's almost 60, he's painting himself, but he's he works in, uh, he's just gotten a new job with the, the Holocaust Museum in Washington. Hmm. And uh, because he's a computer guy, you know, 
that was the way he earned a living. Because he, you can't earn a living to support a family as an artist unless you're very lucky. You know, but his stuff is really interesting. And my other son is a musician and he's musical and he's a teacher and they're both wonderful, wonderful boys, men, men. <laughs> they're not boys anymore. And so you called it middle of the rainbow because you find that gratitude is really the gold in between now and the end kind of thing. That's interesting, gratitude, I think so. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, I've, I've always, it's like I'm totally middle class. You cannot take me out of the middle class. I mean, I, I just can't. I'm not happy with rich, rich people. I'm not. Because most of the time, I like working people. I like people who work for a living. I like working people. And... Uh, yeah, that's sort of what I mean. I'm middle. I'm definitely middle. So the middle of the rainbow is like somewhere over the rainbow. Part of it is that, you know, the colors, the colors of life. What makes life beautiful to you? Loving people, taking care of people. Being with people, just being with people, it makes me happy. It just, if my kids come, I'm happy. I, I really, those two guys really make me very happy. And Bill and I have managed to be together all these years. Not always happy, but uh, there for each other. We've always been there for each other. But it's not, he's not the easiest guy to be with. Uh, you know, just not. Uh, but who is? I mean, you can't have everything. You can't. How, how do you think you guys have made it so long? A lot of it is that we both respect each other. We both, we came together as actors. We, we love each other's work and we are very, we're very critical. We're our best critics. He can critic what I'm doing. I, what he's doing. Nobody else can do that as well as we can. So that, and we're always very honest. So we can spot where we go wrong or where we go right. And we can, we're very good at, we're very different the way we work. Bill works differently as an actor than I work. We work very differently, but we're, we're wonderful critiques of each other. And that is a positive thing, not negative. Do you know? Mm -hmm. uh, in our work, we've been able to always do that. I can say, no, you're, you're, you're talking to the balcony. You don't have to talk to the balcony. You know, when if he'd do some, or he'd say to me, "Where'd you get the funny voice?" If I was imitating something rather than doing it, you know, don't imitate. And I'm a very good imitator, but don't imitate. You know, he he never believes in that. What do you think you've learned from him on like a personal level, apart from acting? Hmm, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. Uh, well, first of all, he has a great sense of humor. So he's always made me laugh. You know, he'll say when things are really, he just, he he has a funny bone. You know, some people are, have a funny bone. And, and they just, they see life funny mm -hmm. and so they'll say things and Nancy Walker said that to me once she said some people have a funny bone and she said he's he's a funny guy she loved him um Gertrude Burr loved him the funny bird funny 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 bill um for me the best thing that 
I can say is when things are bad, Bill always steps up and takes over. Usually he's very kind of passive. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't interfere, you know, with what you want to do. He never interferes. If I wanted to go and, and do a play somewhere, fine. He never would interfere with any of my work, ever. And I would never interfere with any of his. We always said, fine, good, good job. We knew how hard it was to get jobs. And we were very thankful every time either one of us got a job. And any one, either one of us were successful. We were so thankful, both of us, hmm. each for, for each other. And that support of each other in work. And then when terrible things would happen, he always, he's kind of would seem like that. He always stepped up to help me. Because as I said, I'm strong. I go to, but Sometimes something would happen like the death of my niece and it would just devastate me until I, I didn't think I could function. Then Bill would step up and take over and guide us through a difficult time. So, and I think I did the same with him in a, in a different way. Hmm. A tolerant way. I was very tolerant to a certain extent. But uh, none of it was planned. We didn't really plan anything. Everything just happened. I mean, you know, there was no figuring it out. We just lived. Did you think that your marriage would, did you go in wanting your marriage to last a long time and like never never thought about that never thought about it okay we just got married because in those days you couldn't move in together we wanted to sleep together so we had to get married in order to do it neither of our parents and their homes would allow us to be in a, a room together those were the days when you couldn't do any of that hmm. you couldn't do any of that there was no such thing as moving in together, living together for a while and then breaking up and going with somebody else. No, we, we couldn't do that. Do you ever wish you did? Oh, of course, it would have been better. But maybe we wouldn't have made it. I don't know. But it would have been, it's a better way of doing things, I think. I do think it's a better way of doing things. We're still part of, uh, of Victorian times. We're really young. Our parents definitely were Victorian. Both of our parents in different ways were Victorian. And no, that's not a good way. What do you think makes the more modern way better? It's more realistic. It has to do with what is really going on. It, it allows people to get to know each other and maybe work out some of the problems before marriage or find out that they're not gonna work out and, and move on. I mean, if you, uh, if you were to marry somebody and then find out that he was an alcoholic or that he took drugs, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're stuck. But if you live with somebody and you find out, no, I can't, I can't live with this guy because he, or I can't live with her because she's an alcoholic. I don't, I don't want to marry an alcoholic. You're asking for so much trouble. Mm. And so that's the advantage. You find out whether you really like the person and whether you really can live with the person. Mm. I think that's excellent. Did you ever feel stuck? Did I ever feel what? Stuck. Did I ever feel what? Stuck yourself. I guess I can't hear what you said. Um, do you ever feel, did you ever feel stuck in your marriage? Stuck? Yeah. In my marriage? Yes. 
Yes, a couple times. Yes, yes. There were times when I, I wanted out, but I couldn't manage to do it. But I, yeah, because I thought I got to, I got to find an easier, love, more loving guy. I got to find out that. But there's all kinds of love. And you find that everybody expresses it differently. Uh, some people are, I don't know, they express it differently. Like Bill, if Bill cooks a meal, this is a long time ago. If he would cook a meal, a nice meal, I mean, that's, he thinks of that as a labor of love. To cook a nice meal for somebody, he thinks of that as a labor of love. He might be very cross, get out of my kitchen, <laughs> you know, all of that. Get out of my kitchen. But it's, it's his way. He's not going to come up and hug you. No, I don't get any of that from Bill. Hmm. Although he does quote a line from a movie. And every once in a while he said, did I forget to tell you that I love you? You know, it's a line from uh, an old movie. So he'll say that because, no, he doesn't express that. Hmm. And I don't particularly either because my mother, my mother never kissed me. My, no, my mother never hugged me. Hmm. Maybe when I was a wee baby, I don't know, but I never, no. I got none of that, and I got the wrong kind of love from my dad. Yeah. I got the wrong kind. It was invasive, invasive. So I never learned. You kind of have to learn. I think, don't you think your mother and father kind of teach you about affection? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. if sure. they're not affectionate with you you probably won't be you have to learn to be affectionate you have to learn to love Oscar mm -hmm. Hammerstein said you have to learn to hate well you have to learn to love too hmm. it doesn't just happen what do you maybe, think maybe with a wee baby you know that's a time when a person can't help yeah care and love for a baby. That's one of the reasons so many women who shouldn't have lots of babies will have a baby. So they have somebody to love and somebody to love them. Hmm. You know, like a very poor girl who shouldn't really, can't take care of a baby, but they'll have them anyway. What do you think love is? Because it's hard to, for a lot of people, it's hard to define. Yeah, because it's so overused, you know, it's so, I think, I don't know, I think it's something that you just learn to do. You learn, and uh, appreciation, I don't know, it's like, you love a flower. You, I loved as a little girl, I would go around and pick flowers from all the neighbors. I got into trouble because, oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. I love that, you know? Or you say, oh, I love that dress. It's appreciation of something. Hmm. The appreciation of the dress, looking at it and loving it, look, you know, loving it, the person. I love that person and that, or that person loves me. It's just a reaction. It's a reaction. Hmm. But you do say you have to learn it. That seems different than a reaction though, because isn't a reaction in a lot of ways just spontaneous? Yes. And I think it is spontaneous. How do you learn it then? But I think you learn to love if somebody, okay, if somebody is always there, if somebody does things for you, if somebody is always there and uh, helping you or enjoying you, hmm. you know, the two of you are enjoying each other. So that kind of becomes love, right? Hmm. I mean, so you can love. I think that there are times in our life when we need to have a lot of women friends, if you're a woman, 
or I think men need very much need guy friends, male friends. I know that Bill now is very sad because everybody, all his friends are are gone. They're dead. Hmm. And he just, he craves the friendship of his, of guys. He has a few, but you know, most of them are dead. Hmm. Uh, women survive better with that than men do. Women tend, tend to survive and find they have more jobs, I think, if something they, they find more, more to do. But men need that. Just hanging out with men, you know, they enjoy that very much. And talking, talking to men about things. Yeah. Yeah, he just loves that. What makes life hard for you? It isn't hard. I don't think life is hard. I mean, the world is hard. That's what makes life hard, is knowing about all the terrible things. I was very sensitive as a little girl to uh, Hitler and what the Jews, how, how they suffered and how Hitler killed all so many Jews. I was just a little girl, but I knew about that. And I thought that was horrible. I hated that man. Hmm. And I thought, oh, I'm a blonde. He likes blondes. I'll go over to Germany and I'll seduce him and I'll kill him. I was just a kid with little blonde hair, you know. But that's the kind of kid I was. I, oh, if somebody, let's go to Africa and take care of all the people. You know, I wanted to do all of that. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. why. I just, I just did. But I became an actress. And I could do so many things. I could be so many different people. Yeah, I probably, how, how, how can you be so many different people? That's wonderful. Then to be your own dull self, <laughs> get to be a lot of people. It's true. What would you change about the world now if you could? <laughs> you know, there was just something the other day about Jimmy Carter. And uh, on the and he he apparently got rid of some kind of a, a a bug or a worm, and he made he got rid of it and he he did it and it was he changed he got rid of a whole disease after he was you know president it was kind of interesting, and they they asked him what what would he still like to do and he said I want to be I want I want the last worm to be dead before I die. And then the Middle East crisis, he wanted that to be done. I thought those were, those were wonderful. He, he was a wonderful man. He is still, but you know, wonderful man, Jimmy Carter. I guess not a great president, but boy, was he, he's a good man. That's a good man. Uh, but that's who he is. You know, that's what he wants to do. And if you aren't that, you aren't that. But you are what you are. And you try to be the best of who you are. Do the best of who you are. You know, if you're a teacher or whatever you are, an actor, whatever. The lawyers, they, they, I don't think I could stand that. And I wanted to be a lawyer at one time. But I don't think I could stand that. I guess you make a lot of money, but I couldn't stand being a lawyer. It's so interesting. You know, I think now with all that's going on and they're talking all the time, I feel like we're all getting law degrees. You know, I don't know if you watch it, but I do. I watch all the stuff that they're doing with Trump and all the things they're trying to, you know, and, and then they come on MSNBC and they tell you, Le what the legal thing is, and I listen, I think I'm getting a law degree. We're learning so much. <laughs> We're probably learning much too much, you know, but the world is so, I mean, if, if I put solar on, I don't drive, I don't have a car, anything to help with climate change, anything, because I think that'll do us in. So I'll, you know, I'll, 
those things are very, the country is full of guns. People just shoot people. What does that, how, what is that? That you feel you, if you're getting in a fight, you can just shoot somebody. If you didn't have the gun, you wouldn't be able to shoot them. Stupid people, stupid. Very. Is there, and you're talking about all these things that are scary and are things about a world that are now becoming reality. Very much part of my life. What, what do you think scares you the most? What scares me the most is the, is if anything bad, I can, I've been very lucky, I'm 94. Yeah. I've been very lucky, I'm 94. Um, so I'm not, obviously one doesn't enjoy thinking about that you're gonna die, but you are. So that, that isn't scary, that's something that just is there and you have to deal with that. But, but what is scary is the thought of a child, of your child, something bad happening to your child. Hmm. That's very hard to take. That, that would do me in. That would do me in. Something bad happening to you. I so admire a woman recently got this wonderful job and she's been taking care of a a child for 20 years disabled hmm. has cared for this child for 20 years now she just got a glorious job and when I was told about it I mean it, it made me so happy because I admire somebody who spends their life primarily somehow taking care of of a disabled child of, and helping them live and enjoy life. That is a huge, huge sacrifice. Hmm. I mean, I, I guess I did it for like three or four years, but a little bit, a little bit, but nothing like that. I mean, I, the people that do that, the, the couples that raise, spend their lives. When you look at St. Jude's and what they do for children with cancer, it's so wonderful. You can't help it. You have to give to people like that because they don't charge the parents. It's all free of money, but it's their lives. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Those places are amazing and wonderful. Hmm. Do you, when, because just before you're mentioning dying, do you fear dying because it's the end? Or do you feel like there's more to dying afterwards? Or no, I, I, I don't fear it, but I do think it's the, definitely the end. That's it. You're gone, you know. And, you know, we're actors, or I mean, now when we, Die. We know people are going to be watching us. I'm going. To, people are going to be watching Twins forever. The movie I did. People are going to be watching Boy Meets World forever. People are going to be watching 1776 forever. People are going to be watching Little House on the Prairie forever. I mean, it's great to know that when we're gone, people will still be able to watch us. That's great that an actor has that. It's very special. That's very special. You know, I mean, I did one episode of uh, Golden Girls and I go around and people ask all this because I played with B. Arthur and B was my friend and we had fun together and we had, she was funny and we, so then I enjoy telling stories. People want to hear, you know, what was B like and so I tell them, and and I I enjoy doing that, and it keeps me alive. Hmm. 
keeps her alive in everybody's mind. Not only what she did on film, but the fact that I'm talking about her to them, you know? Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> is there a is there something you want to do before you die that you haven't done? Not really. Uh no. No. I'd love to travel, but I can't anymore. I mean, I love going to Greece and mm. Paris and I would love to be able to just, you know, almost do it by myself, just wander the earth. I would. But the problem is that by the time you get to the, well, first of all, I could never leave Bill. He would kill me. <laughs> I couldn't do it. But and he's not a traveler. But I would love to be able to just roam the earth, roam from place to place all by myself and see everything and do whatever I wanted to do and eat whatever I wanted to do. That would be my idea of heaven. Hmm. I used to do that sometime in New York City. I would go in for three or four days and just go to the theater and go to the ballet and just all by myself, just me, doing exactly what I want to do, exactly when I wanted to do it. That's fun. Hmm. That's fun. Is there a time period in history you think you'd want to live in if not now? Like if now was not an option, you had to pick something else. What do you think? Where do you think you'd live? Not really. I don't know. I'm 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 happy with the, what I've had to live through. It's been a lot, not, almost a hundred years. I've been yeah. on this earth almost a hundred years. So I've been in a lot, I've gone through a lot of different things. I'm fine. I'm satisfied. Is there an animal you think your personality relates to? No. Not at all. I'm not an animal person. Really? No, not at all. Why don't you like animals? I had, I had some cats. I've had some dogs. I don't do well. I don't know how to raise a dog. I don't. Because I do. I've had two dogs, I've ruined dogs. I, I, I don't do well with dogs and cats get killed. My cats have all been killed. So I'm not, no, I don't go there. I don't go there. And then one last question for you. Is there a piece of music or a song that you really resonate with? No, when when my when I was little, I would go on the road with my father, and he would sing. He had a lovely baritone voice, and he would sing things like, uh, "What were they? Oh, kind of Indian love call, and after the ball is over, things like that." So that was when I was a very little girl, and I. I loved all that. That was wonderful. I'm not, I wish I were more musical. I think there again, my mother convinced me that I wasn't musical. And so it was hard hmm. to overcome that because it, it's a natural thing to learn and then to study. And of course, some people are very gifted, Yeah. but uh, she inhibited me there. She really inhibited me there. Um, uh, so about music, I, I have loved her. I adored Judy Garland. Anything mm -hmm. she ever sang, I would sing. I adored Maria Callas. Yeah, I adored, beautiful. I, but not any particular song, no. Hmm. Yeah, music is, both of the people you named, the music is beautiful. It's not very often you get people who sing that well, honestly. No. No.